Dear students, a hearty welcome to the video lecture series on the fourth semester English Common Course Textbook of Kannur University Demystifying Knowledge. Today we are going to discuss the eighth lesson of the textbook titled Indian Culture and Authority, which is actually uh, an excerpt taken from the book The Indians, a portrait of a people written jointly by Sudhir Kakar and Katharina Kakar. Sudhir Kakar, who is currently based in Goa, is an Indian psychoanalyst and writer. He was in the academics for quite a long time. He was the professor and later the visiting professor at various reputed universities in the world like uh, Harvard, Chicago and Melbourne. And uh, his uh, interests are in the psychology of religions and cultural psychology. Uh, he has uh, more than 25 books to his credit uh, which include non-fiction as well as fiction. Katrina Kaker is uh, his partner in life as well as in literary pursuits and as I already mentioned uh, this excerpt is from a book jointly written by them. This excerpt explores uh, the configuration of authority and hierarchy in the traditional extended or joint family system of India and its impact uh, on an individual right from his or her infancy. It also deliberates on the changes that this traditional family setup underwent as a result of modernity and as a result of the rise of the urban middle class. It traces how matrilineal slowly gave way to patrilineal where the father emerged as the central figure in the family. Uh, the Kaka couple, they begin uh, this write-up by introducing Louis Dumont's term Homo Hierarchicus uh, to elaborate on the hierarchical family relationships in India. Louis Dumont, uh, as you know, is a French uh, anthropologist, sociologist and Indologist who is uh, known all over the world. So connecting uh, the notion of hierarchy with the early language use of the Indian child, they establish that uh, Indian kids use more number of nursery sounds than the six universal nursery sounds used invariably by children in different countries in different societies. These universal uh, sounds or nursery sounds are uh, Mama, uh, Dada, Papa, Baba, Nana, Tata and as evident from this expression uh, it's a combination, it means every, every term is a combination of uh, a consonant uh, and uh, the uh, the R ah sound, the long vowel R. Ah. So the Indian child uh, uses a more number of uh, nursery sounds, more number of such uh, expressions because uh, as per the Indian joint family system, this child is uh, surrounded by a number of relatives uh, who are immediately around the child. Uh, they cite uh, the example of the uh, Punjabi joint family system where a child is surrounded by a, a number of very close uh, relatives uh, say ma, mother, mama, mother's brother, dada, uh, father's father, nana, mother's father, chacha, uh, father's younger brother, taya, father's elder brother, Masi, mother's sister and so on. 
in contrast in the western societies uh, the your children or the kids are exposed to very few relatives maybe the mother and the father so they need a minimum number of terms so this use of language is indicative of the nature of character formation of the indian kids in the formative years right from uh, an early age right from infancy an indian develops a sense of family relationships and of hierarchy right from the childhood he or she learns how to manage different people of different age of different character of different nature of different behavior pattern and this uh, becomes a great investment uh, in uh, his or her later years uh, they learn the art of negotiating with people which gives some uh, a great advantage in business transactions if they enter into into business the traditional uh, join uh, family experience teaches an indian about the obligations to the people above in the hierarchy and expectations from the people below them in the hierarchy so uh, there is the presence of the the reciprocal uh, values of obedience and respect you know you are obedient to your elders and you command or at least you expect obedience and respect from th uh, those young ones in the in the family then the author speak about the generational conflict uh, between the uh, older generation and the younger generation in uh, india and in western countries they argue that uh, in the western countries this generational conflict is considered as something positive as something that leads to the regeneration rejuvenation or renewal of uh, social institutions in india uh, such conflicts are comparatively less because the the youngsters in india they never try to overthrow the hierarchical structure of the family they want to be within the fold of the family within the comfort zone of the family always so they never try to overthrow it they never try to subvert the the joint family system rather they try to you know only extend uh, the values the family values to meet their aspirations so uh, whatever be uh, the fascination that an indian youth has uh, for celebrities like uh, film stars or sports stars when it comes to the question of choosing the ultimate role models always it is their parents either the father or the mother or maybe uh, there will be one uncle who is very prominent uh, very influential uncle uh, that uh, this shows that uh, they always think within the frame of the uh, family of the joint family the authors uh, then highlight the point that uh, in the social and professional sphere also family relationships are valued over objectivity transparency business ethics etc so in india corruption nepotism that is favoritism to one's relatives dishonesty etc become unacceptable only when they go against the principle of primacy of relationships so whenever you do something unfair if it is uh, in the interest of your kith and kin your friends or relatives somebody immediately around you then it becomes very fair or at least not unfair uh, that is the argument put forth by uh, sudhir and katrina 
another value system generated uh, through the extended family experience uh, in India is the obedience to a benevolent patriarch like a king or a maternal uncle, the father or uh, a guru uh, who takes care of uh, everyone and simultaneously regulates their behavior. So you have this uh, masculine figure uh, who uh, is your protector, who is your guardian. He uh, takes care of everything that you need or at least uh, he gives you an impression that he takes care of everything that you need and what he expects in return is your obedience. So such a uh, patriarchal figure, a benevolent patriarchal figure, this uh, figure is often consolidated uh, through different transactions in the traditional Indian uh, family. Uh, here the Indians are taught to be good subordinates to this uh, benevolent patriarch by not denying openly or defying openly but by being evasive when the patriarch's behavior is unacceptable. You, you won't question it uh, you know, openly, rather you will simply uh, evade that situation, you will take a different uh, course of action. Another legacy of Indian childhood in superior subordinate or leader follower relationship is the idealization of the former, idealization of the superior, idealization of the leader. The superior, be it the family head or a political leader or a religious guru, is always treated as one with some charisma, some magical magnetic powers. The authors argue that unlike the Westerners, Indians are generally more prone to revel uh, than admire their leaders. Then they speak about the role of the father in the traditional Indian society. See, in the traditional Indian uh, joint family system, uh, the father enters his son's life in a big way only in the later years of the boy's childhood. Since the Indian child spends its early life in the maternal home, amidst the uncles and aunties, the father is only a distant figure for it at that time. The child very rarely gets a chance to see the father. The child doesn't spend time with the father. The father comes or the father's care comes only much later in the child's life, only when the child grows into say adolescence. In order to prevent uh, the formation of nuclear cells uh, within the joint family or formation of nuclear families that may upset the cohesion of uh, the joint family, the strength and rigidity of the joint family system, a father is restrained, is controlled uh, in the presence of his own child and is compelled to divide his interest and support equally among his own and his brother's children. So uh, you cannot love your own children or you cannot love your children alone. You have to divide your love and care among all the children of the family, be it your child or your brother's child. Now this uh, mechanism ensures that the joint family setup continues to exist. Another reason for the lack of uh, warm relationship between the father and the son is because of the gender based dichotomy in parenting roles, which says that the father's role is not to take care of the child, not to love the child, not to pamper the child, 
but to discipline the child. So, uh, the father figure has a feeling that uh, he should not be too close to the child. Uh, if he does so, the child will be spoiled because he should be a strict disciplinarian and should uh, show the child the right course of life through his disciplining techniques. However, it's a reality that every father maintains a strong emotional bond with his children. Though, he is not able to express it in the traditional family setup. Older autobiographies often depict the Indian father as a sensitive man and charged with the feelings for his son which he does not openly reveal. The authors uh, cite uh, uh, here an episode from Autobiography of a Yogi by Yogananda to prove this point, to prove this a sentimentally charged relationship between the father and the son. This particular excerpt concludes with a note on the transition in the father-son relationship in the context of modernity and the rise of the urban middle class. In the modern society, the urban society, fathers show active involvement in bringing up their infants and little children. So there is a close bond between the father and the children unlike in the traditional society. The authors state that uh, the early experience of having fathers who are no longer distant and forbidding figures who are often available to their children as playmates, as their friends will definitely change the notion of power structure or hierarchy as well as the expectations that young Indians will have of their leaders. So far in this lecture, I have tried to summarize the central arguments of the lesson. I hope uh, you were able to follow me. So we stop uh, this discussion here and proceed to a discussion of the short answer questions given at the end of the lesson and their answers. Thank you very much. Question number one. What is the difference between India and Western countries in terms of the sounds recognized and repeated by babies? Answer. Babies in the West usually use only a few of the nursery sounds, for example, Dada, Mama, Baba, etc., whereas the Indian babies use greater number of such expressions as they are always immediately surrounded by many people in the joint family setup. Question number two. What is the cultural value judgment Indians are unwilling to make regarding adjusting their behaviors to satisfy authority figures? Answer. Whether the highly developed antenna that makes an Indian almost anticipate the wishes of a superior and adjust his behavior accordingly should be called flexibility or a lack of a firm sense of self is a cultural value judgment that Indians are unwilling to make. Next question. Why do young Indians not feel like living life on 
their own terms answer since young people in indian families generally receive a good deal of attention and nurturance from the older generation and maintenance of family integrity is valued higher than an unfolding of individual capacities young indians do not feel like living life on their own terms who are the primary role models for a majority of indian youth answer the primary role models for a majority of indian youth are from the family most often a parent now the fifth question what is the one standard that indians hold regarding responsible adult conduct answer an individual's lifelong obligation to his kith and kin is the only one standard that indians hold regarding responsible adult conduct question number 6 what is characteristic of a traditional indian father answer a traditional indian father is a distant presence in the life of his children his guiding voice often gets diffused among the voices of many older male members of the joint family and his individual paternity is muffled his major role lies in disciplining the child let's see the seventh question what are the reasons for a traditional father not taking a demonstratively active role in the upbringing of his son answer a traditional father operates under the logic of the joint family this demands that in order to prevent the building up of nuclear cells within the family that can destroy its cohesion a father be restrained in the presence of his own child and divide his interest and support equally among his own and his brother's children the eighth question is at what point in his son's life does the father make his big entry answer the father makes his big entry in his son's life only in the later years of the boy's childhood now the last question what kind of a father can change notions of the expectations that young indians will have of their leaders answer a father who is no longer a distant and forbidding figure who is available to both sons and daughters often as a playmate will change notions of expectations that young indians will have of their leaders Thank you once again. Wish you all the best.